And now, a thought from man. I'm really starting to like the direction a lot of networks are starting to take with their animated shows. A lot of the time we get those fantasy shows that just put us in a weird place or take us on some fantastical adventure. But I like the fact that a lot of networks are deciding to say, hey, let's make some more slice of life stuff. You know, with Nickelodeon, you got the Loud House and the Alvin and the Chipmunk series. And Cartoon Network was the ones who kind of pioneered this new age of slice of life shows with the stuff like Clarence or We Bear Bears. And now they got the show Craig of the Creek. And I just think, yeah, this is what I want. Some variety. We don't always have to have fantasy shows. We could have shows where it's just kids hanging out in a neighborhood, just kind of doing their own thing, using their imagination to help entertain themselves. That's something I can enjoy. And I like the fact that Cartoon Network decided, hey, let's do this again as well. Let's keep pushing for some variety change things up that's always welcomed in my opinion all right the series was created by these two guys named matt burnett and ben levin who used to be writers for steven universe which makes a bit of sense you do get a vibe of steven universe especially with some of the character designs a lot of it just kind of comes off as a bit of steven universe or at least it has a hint of steven universe in how it is especially when it comes to some of the humor and the character interactions you do get a bit of a vibe of steven universe with this show but it still comes off as its own thing. The main premise of it is about a boy and his friends as they go to the creek every afternoon and just use their imaginations to kind of go on crazy adventures. It's honestly very sweet and innocent in how it presents itself. A lot of the time you're just thinking, huh, that's sort of like how I was when I was a kid, just using my imagination to just come up with whatever crazy adventure I could or crazy scenario and using the world around you to enact that scenario. It just has a nice innocence to it and a natural feeling of nostalgia of just going outside and playing with your friends. It's very timeless and sort of close to Peanuts or even Disney's Recess in that regard, in that it doesn't really rely so much on references to kind of get you to feel nostalgic about things. It would rather rely on the characters and their interactions, which honestly I appreciate a lot more. I mean, I enjoy Stranger Things as much as the next guy, but I do enjoy a show more for having to just rely rather on natural nostalgia than just, hey, this certain thing existed. It feels less manipulative than most. I still enjoy Stranger Things, but I just enjoy this a lot better in terms of feeling nostalgic. And one thing about this show is it does a better job of capturing childhood nostalgia than Clarence. Mainly because the problem with Clarence was the main character, Clarence, was just so annoying. Like his voice was ear grating and he was very stupid and a lot of the times got in the way of people that didn't really deserve it. So you just kind of couldn't feel for a lot of stuff going on with him. Whereas with Craig of the Creek, the main character acts like a genuine kid. He acts like somebody who can make mistakes and sort of learn from them. Whereas with Clarence, he's just so stupid that you don't feel like he's learned anything from anything that's happened to him. So that's just kind of my gripe with Clarence. And I feel like this is what I wanted out of Clarence. I get more from this than I did from Clarence. That's just something I really enjoy about this series. Oh, that didn't sound too bad. The title character, Craig, is the leader of the group. He's a major optimist and just a fun-loving, adventure-seeking guy. He's very outgoing and he just approaches every type of obstacle with a certain smile on his face. But that doesn't mean he can't recognize when things have gotten bad. He is more like a genuine leader of his group. He tries to do what's best while at the same time listening to his friends whenever they have a concern. Doesn't mean he can't really get them into trouble. He just sometimes will be a little too optimistic about finding adventure and it can usually result in his friends and him getting caught up somewhere. And he does feel like a real leader who tries to be the best and do the best for his group. That's always a nice quality in a character. There's no more branches to jump to. <sighs> With suits like this, we can't go back down. Huh? Guys, I'll scratch everywhere around it, but I feel like I'm gonna have to scratch it soon. I'm so sorry, guys. I wanted us to become legendary explorers, but instead we're gonna die in a tree. No good explorers have died in trees. No, that's not true. Magellan had a bush-related fatality. 
There's his friend Kelsey, who's sort of the weird one of the group. She s tries to take herself a little too seriously, and she really gets into this imaginative world that they created for themselves. She tends to be more overdramatic about things and what happens, and she even does inner monologues to herself, which ultimately could be pretty funny with how she just goes about them. What do you say, Kelsey? Kelsey didn't know how to answer. She promised herself that fourth grade would be different. Her hands were still spotted with blisters from the battles of summer vacation. The siege of the Briar Patch. The battle for Sled Hill! Yet her soul ached for more. She's doing that narrating thing again. I hope I get to read that book one day. Sometimes she can even be more the brutal one with certain things. But she's ultimately harmless. She's just a very fun and enjoyable character, honestly. You just enjoy the fact that she's so weird and quirky with her taking everything so seriously and over-dramatizing things. That's just sort of the fun thing about her. You really enjoy her character for it. <laughs> it's like a tickly headache. I'm training Mortimer to peck out the brains of my enemies. I no longer feel comfortable with this. There's also their friend JP, who's pretty much the goofy one. He's a lot more the out there type of character. He's very funny in that he's just a bit unfocused in what he's supposed to be doing a lot of the time. You get a lot of funny lines out of him and just funny reactions in general. He's just that kind of funny, goofy character. He's just very unfocused about things, and you just get genuine laughs out of him, because he acts more like a kid who's just kind of lost with himself. Who knows what evil goes on here? Oh, sweet ground chips. No, no, not food. This is just really a great trio of friends who you just think to yourself, yeah, that's sort of like me when I was a kid. You know, I had my group of friends who I'd hang with and we always had different personalities and we just have fun using our imagination to just do whatever we want. That's just something I really like about this show. It's very down to earth. It doesn't have to rely on too much for it to work. It's just a very nice touch. That kind, you sick people! Ugh. I no longer feel comfortable with this. The creek is the main place they hang out at. It's sort of this main hub area where the kids just have fun and do whatever they want just using their imagination. They sort of even built their own society around it, and it's kind of reminiscent of like RPGs central hubs. It sort of gives off that vibe of Disney's recess with how they have everything set up, you know? There are certain different factions and different types of people doing their own type of thing, and that's just kind of how they're defined. You just feel like, huh, this is actually a pretty cool place. At one point, you kind of get jealous because it's like, why didn't we think of this for my neighborhood? Like, this seems pretty freaking awesome. Like, holy crap. They treat it so much like a society that there are even some sort of wars for territories where they have like water balloon battles. It's just like, wow, man, they really put effort into just making this thing their own. It's just fun. It's just a pleasant place to be in. You just enjoy the scenarios these kids are going to get into just being in this creek area. It's just very nice and pleasant. Bad boys for life! The humor for the most part is something that does come out of Steven Universe but is a bit more grounded in how they go about it. Most of the time the humor is from the quirkiness of the characters, mainly like the weird conversations that they have. It's just very funny with what they end up talking about a lot of the time and you just feel like, yeah that's kind of funny. It feels like something a kid would actually say and even their own imagination plays into their humor as well. A lot of the time they'll think of these certain fantasy elements that clearly aren't really happening but their imaginations just kind of allow these weird things to happen in their own head. You just laugh at certain things they think of. And even their own imaginations play into the animation a lot of the time. It looks very nice. They use a lot of greens to really make the world look so vibrant and enjoyable to be in, even though it's just a creek. And even when they decide, hey, let's dive into these kids' imaginations sometimes and see exactly what they're seeing in their head, it plays very well. You see these nice scenarios and just think, huh, that's just kind of imaginative and very creative. And it even works a bit differently because the way this is, it does resemble Steven Universe's animation style, but it's different because a lot of the time with Steven Universe, they would go off model. But here they're like, let's keep everything more on model. 
and that works better for this show than it did for Steven Universe. Steven Universe's off-model animation could be a bit off-putting, but here they decided let's not do that for this. Let's keep them on model, and it kind of works a lot better here. Legends. This is just an absolutely great series. It relies more on a natural feeling of nostalgia rather than just, hey, remember this thing? It existed. It's something that makes you reminisce about your childhood without having to bring up some sort of pop culture reference. You just remember the certain things you would do as a kid with your friends when you'd go outside after school. The characters are very fun and enjoyable and you just end up enjoying a lot of the situations they get themselves into. It manages to be a very timeless series, something that generations from now could watch this and still be able to get what it's going for. It's something that takes place in the modern day but manages to understand we should not put in things that are just part of pop culture. Whether or not it's old or new, we should just rely on strong characters getting into fun, enjoyable scenarios and situations. That's just something I really appreciate a series like this for. It's a nice slice of life series that doesn't have to rely on fantasy elements to make it interesting. Just nice characters having fun. And I'm honestly very happy we're getting more shows like this. I like fantasy shows, but at the same time, I do like things being a bit more grounded every now and then. And those are always welcomed in my book but that's just a thought